Want a sword? Get a mentor. Hey, it's Nina Carmichael and we made these videos because you're probably the most ambitious person in your circle. But you know you're capable of more and you need a push by surround yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael, and learn the biggest hack to getting everything you want in life. Enjoy! Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, model success. The fastest way to get what you want in life is to model success. Be super clear on what you want out of life and then go find people who've accomplished exactly that and learn from them. Who you spend your time with is who you become. So choose wisely because most people wake up like an accident instead of actually chasing down their dreams. And it starts with modeling success. I've been a big believer in modeling success ever since my very first business. It's, it's why I continue to do what I do. I, I tell the story, Bill Gates saved my first company. I, I haven't met him yet. Hopefully will get to shake his hand and tell him the impact that he had. In my first business, I was making no money and I, and I wanted to quit on my company and I told my business partner that I quit and I felt like I had tried everything. I tried everything. It wasn't for lack of effort. Every day I woke up and, and new ideas came into my head and I tried them and nothing was working. You know when you know that feeling when you're just trying non-stop and nothing is working and the frustration that comes over you to feel like I feel worthless. I felt worthless as a human that I that I wasn't contributing that I was just putting all this effort in and just nothing was happening and that led to me quitting on my business partner. And the next day I woke up and I said I can't quit. I'm going to regret it if I quit right now. But I have to find another way. Like this is it's not this is not working right now. And then I, I just realized I'm not the first guy to try to sell software before. Somebody has figured this out, right? Somebody has gone through this process. I can learn from them and, and maybe apply that strategy to my company and maybe it'll work. And I thought of the only person I can think of at the time was Bill Gates. I had a biotech software company. He didn't have biotech. It was something else. But I mean, I'm at this point, it was, it was bottom of the barrel. I'm willing to try anything right now. And I looked at how he started his company, went from zero to one, and it was through partnerships. And so I applied that strategy to my business and, and shortly thereafter closed my first partnership deal that paid us $13,500. And that was a lot of money for me because I was only making 300 bucks a month at that time. And that gave me hope. And ever since then, whenever I don't know what to do in any area, in life, in business, in relationships, anything, I ask myself, who's done this thing? And it's recognizing that nobody is the perfect person. There's no one person you can learn everything from, but there's different pieces from different people. So when you're super clear on what you want, when it's really easy to know, this is what I want in my business. This is what I want in my relationship. This is what I want in my career. This is what I want in my, this specific thing. I want to be a salsa dancer like him. And I want to be a YouTuber like her. And I want to be a real estate investor like him then that's what you learn from that person. Modeling success is the fastest way to get you where you need to be. Understand that you don't have to be a genius at everything. The, the path before you has already been figured out. It's already been done by other people. And as the famous quote goes, success leaves clues. You have to start looking for them. All right, how do I study success? What is my three-step process as somebody who's maybe done it more than any other person, at least definitely within a YouTube environment? Here we go. Step number one is get super clear on what you want. What do you want? What kind of business do you want to build? And inside of that, what kind of marketer do you want to be? What kind of operations manager do you want to be? What kind of leader do you want to be? And understanding that those may be different skill sets that you learn from different people, right? I want to be a visionary like Steve Jobs. I want to believe in people like AP Janini. I want to be a father like my father. I want to stand up for my principles like Howard Schultz. I want to, I want to know that now is the time to be the greatest me like Kanye West. You're pulling different things from different people. If you start to mush it all together, that's when you lose clarity. Or if I say, I just want to be like Steve Jobs, that's not great because there's a lot of things I don't want to be from Steve. I don't want to be a father like Steve Jobs. There's things that I don't want to be from different people. The goal is to be the best Evan Carmichael. And you can't get that by just following one person, but you take different little pieces from different people when you're super clear. So you have to get super clear on what you want out of life. What kind of person do you want to be? Write it down and be super clear. Step number two is find the people who have it. So who's done it? This is what you want in life. Great, go out and start researching who's done it. So if I want to build a successful software company, who's done it? Bill Gates did it, great. Let me go learn from him. 
right? Let me understand how he did it. Let me go read the early days of how he got started, right? Not, not so much how he does it now, but how did he get started? So for each of those categories, who has done it? One of the things that helped me free myself from being sick all the time was I studied Wim Hof. I used to get sick all the time. I was sick all the time. I would have a belief system that if somebody was sick, if Alex got sick, he's like, Alex, don't come, don't come near me. Don't come over today. Work from home. I don't want to see you because I'm going to get sick. And I would get sick. Every month I was sick. I get sick now maybe once a year. It's crazy. Why? Because I, I decided to study after, after being so fed up with having four days of hiccups that I couldn't get rid of. It's pretty embarrassing. I was hiccuping for four days. I couldn't get rid of it. And I decided I'm, I'm just, I need to get healthy. Who's done this? And I came across Wim Hof. Great. I'm going to learn from Wim Hof and I'm going to learn how to not get sick again. I don't necessarily want to be an entrepreneur like Wim Hof. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that I probably don't want to learn from Wim Hof. Awesome. How to not get sick. I want to learn that from him. So be super clear on what you want to learn and then find the people who are the best in the world at that one thing. And that's who you're going to study. And then step number three is live in their world. So if you want to learn Italian, the fastest way is to go to Italy. You'll, you'll be forced to learn it. Chances are whatever you want to learn, whoever you want to become like, the, the people that you want to hang around with and spend time and, and be the next visionary like Steve Jobs, right? Those people are not in your environment right now. And so if you just get this little micro dose once a month, it's not going to be enough. If you just watch one Wim Hof video, it's not going to be enough, right? You might have this one little moment that's amazing, but then it's not consistent enough. You have to live in their world. So. For me, I, I, I've done it by creating these channels. I forced myself to be in people's worlds by creating this. I, I'm not hanging around Grant Cardone every day. I'm not hanging around Gary Vee or Tony Robbins or Ed Milet every day, right? I've connected with these people. I've, I've, I've met a good chunk of them. We've done content and, and hung out, but I'm not with them every day. So it's easy to fall back to where you were. So I force it through my content. I force it through my business. I force it through the YouTube channel that I'm making. Now you could do it for yourself as well. Whatever you want to learn and be more like, be around it, be in it, have it in your world. I look at the Wim Hof stuff and when I was going through his uh, app and, and the material, I was doing it very consistently. But because Wim Hof wasn't a part of my environment every day, I fell off. I wasn't doing the breathing as much. I wasn't doing the cold showers as much. And so what did I do? I printed a giant poster. I would, it's in my bathroom. I would take you back there, but my camera is stuck on a tripod. It's this giant poster of Wim Hof, I subscribe to his YouTube channel. So anytime he has a new video coming up, it's a trigger. It's a reminder like, yeah, oh, right. I need to do that again. I need to, Cause you're going to forget. You're going to fall back to your old habits and your old ways and your old thinking patterns. You need to be shifted into the new one. And that happens by living in their world. So follow them on Instagram, follow them on YouTube, put something up on your wall to remind you of it every single day of that thing that you're trying to become because that thing that you want to become is the best version of you. So we got super clear on, on what best version of you looks like. You've now identified who's done it and now you're living in their world. And that doesn't mean you have to follow a thousand people, but different people for different things to help you be the best you. Rule number two, play to win. Most people are so afraid to lose that they don't even try. So when you have nothing, when you're at the bottom, you've got nothing to lose. And so it's very easy to go off and try. But as soon as there are stakes, as soon as you've won just a little bit, now you risk losing something. And this is where most people back down and play small for life. And so you need to decide, are you playing life to win or are you playing life afraid to lose? So I look at my YouTube channel as an example. When I started it, there was no risk. Nobody knew me. Nobody was watching my videos. I could go and fail, didn't make a difference. I could try a whole bunch of different things. Whenever the algorithm changed, I got pumped because the people who were ahead of me were complaining and would, would be romantic and would want it to go back to the way it was. And I'm like, hey, algorithm change, amazing, let's go. I'm gonna learn that new thing. But now I've gotten bigger, right? Now I think I have more views than anybody in the entrepreneur space on YouTube. And it's easy to now be protective. It's easy to say, well, I built this thing I don't wanna lose. And I hate that. I need to, I need to destroy that. I wanna be constantly losing, constantly testing, constantly risking. Now, not risking at all, not, not putting everything on the line just for one thing, but to be willing to test, to be willing to fail. As an example, I split up my channels. 
I split up my channels into eight different channels. I got an advice from Matt Geelan. He's one of five people who, who I, I would put on my hand as people who I would listen to for YouTube advice, right? He was one of the five. And another one of the five said, don't do it. So I got five people who I listen to about YouTube. One person says, split up your channel. One person says, don't do it. What do I do? I have to do it just to see because I know what not splitting up my channel looks like. It's what I'm currently doing. But splitting up my channel, I won't know if it's gonna work or not until I actually go off and do it. And so I did. And here's a news flash. It's not working yet, right? My other channels, the most I think has 8,000 subscribers. I have two around 8,000 subscribers and the others are, are smaller and they're growing every day and they're gaining momentum every day. But overall, my subscriber growth is down. My views are down. My revenue is down. Everything is down. It's all down. Watch time is down. Everything is down. Is it a big failure? I don't know. Maybe. I'm going to give it more time and see. I'm going to give it more time and see. It's a risk, right? I went from making three videos a day on one channel to making one video a day across a couple channels. And then, you know, once a week on some channels and we have eight different channels now. It's more headache. It's more management. Maybe ultimately it will work out. Or maybe in six months I'll come back and say, man, that was a giant failure. That sucked, but I won't know until I try. And that's, that's where you need to risk it. That's where you need to try. You need to see, you need to test, you need to taste it. Because if I just take that mindset every time of saying, well, this is what's always worked. And so I need to protect this and stay true to this. And that's it. And I can never change one. I'm going to eventually hate my life. I'm going to hate my business because you need to evolve. You need to change. You need to grow. What, what got you success is amazing. But if you, if you then do that same thing over and over and over forever, you're going to feel like you got yourself a job. Why did you leave your job to do this thing, to have creativity and freedom and fun, not to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, right? You have to evolve your business as you evolve as a human or, or your business will start to, to flounder and suffer. And it happens to so many entrepreneurs. You see this growth and then you see this plateau, this long plateau and people start to get more and more bored with their business and with their life because they're not evolving their business as they evolve as humans, right? So if I did that with my YouTube channel, I would, I would start to struggle and suffer and you see it with a lot of YouTubers. Now maybe in, in six months I end up going back, right? Or maybe I never go back but there's always gonna be some new iteration, some new version, some new thing that, that I'm willing to risk, even though I've grown my channel. I'm, I'm among the biggest in the space. And so always having that mindset, I wanna win. I wanna win, I wanna keep pushing. I, I wanna just not play life trying not to lose. And so when, again, at the beginning, it's easy. But once you start building something up and that's, in your business, that's in your relationships, like your relationship will need to evolve too. What got you there is a good starting point, but you're gonna evolve. And, and your spouse or your boyfriend, girlfriend, they're gonna evolve too. And can you evolve together? I think the test of a relationship is how much can you evolve together? Because if you're growing and learning and improving yourself and, and your partner's just staying still, you're eventually gonna grow apart. Or if your partner's going a different way, you're gonna grow apart even faster. But you're gonna grow. Nobody just wants to stay static forever. And so can you weave and grow together? That's the game. So you have to decide, are you playing to win or are you playing just not to lose? So how do you play to win? I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think can help. Step number one is use the fear of regret. Use regret. Re regret is very powerful because if, if you look at people who are at the end of their life, in old age homes, who, who can't do it anymore, who, who can't chase their goals anymore, they're, they're filled with regret. They're like, I, I knew I had potential. I knew I could have done something but I didn't because I was just too afraid. Use that power for yourself. You're afraid to do something. You're afraid to change. You're afraid to, to risk something. You're going to be 95. You're going to be on your deathbed soon. Like imagine you're there right now and you never took the thing that you wanted to do. You never got an answer. You never chased it down because you were afraid. You're going you're gonna to hate your life. That's where most people are. But the good news is you can come back to, to this year, right? You can step back into your body right now and say, I can do it. And so adopting the mindset that you would rather know and fail than not know. Not knowing equals regret forever. Knowing and failing, you can deal with it. You very rarely regret the things that you do. It's most often the things that you did not do, that you were afraid to do, the actions not taken that people regret. And so don't be like that. Whenever you're afraid of doing something, take that test. Use the regret test. Imagine yourself at 95 in a rocking chair in an old age home and you never did the thing that you're thinking about right now. Would you regret that? And whatever you think that you would regret not doing, you have to summon the courage to do it right now. 
Step number two is understand that your setback primes your comeback. Your setbacks prime your comebacks. Nobody's on top always, right? It says drop and then you come back even higher. And so whatever you want to go off and do, right? Whatever change you want to go off and make, chances are one, it's not fatal. Like you can always come back to something, right? If you want to take a year off after university to go be an entrepreneur instead of going to that job, right? If you're, if you're in a job that you hate and you say, you know what? I can always get another job. So I'm going to try for a year doing my own business. It's not fatal. You can always come back and do it. You can always come back and get that crappy job. You know, you're capable of it. You know, you're probably more than capable of it, of what you're doing right now. But the thing is, you're probably not going to go back to it, right? Like you're leaving it for a reason. You don't go back to your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. You go back to that crappy boss because in that time, even though you may have failed a whole bunch of times, you've learned and you've grown. You're a stronger person because of it. So that setback primes you for your comeback because now you're a stronger person. You're capable of more and you'll find the next path. The path that you chose may not be the ultimate path for you, but you know that the path you left is not the path for you either. And so better than sticking on some path that you know that you don't love, it's better to go off and explore, to test, to taste, to try. Most people don't do that enough. And they're so worried about the failure. You're worried about this new path failing and not working out. You can tell yourself you can always go back to that thing. And you can, and, and the facts are you can. You can go back and do what you're doing before, but you probably won't. Even if the thing that you jump to doesn't work out, you're not going back to where you were because you're strong, you've grown, and that'll set you up for the comeback. That'll set you up for the next great thing in your life because you won't find the great thing doing the thing that you hate doing. And step number three is say it's the best. I've trained myself that whenever something really negative is happening to me, I say, this is the best. This is the best. What was the best part of me going on my tour for 90 days, 23 cities? Breaking my neck. Broke my neck in two spots, had a concussion, three staples in my head. I still have, you can kind of see down there. How do I point? Right there, right there. Got, got my, my two neck braces that I had to sleep in and, and be in basically all day long except for a 10 minute shower. That was the best part of the tour. Not just positive attitude, like it's the best. It's actually the best. Because that negative situation that, that you're dealing with right now makes you stronger. It shows you what you're capable of. Thank you. Your purpose comes from your pain ultimately, right? Like the thing that you want to do for the rest of your life comes from the most painful moment in your life. Whatever you struggle the most with, is the thing that you want to help other people through. And so thank you for that crazy pain. Somebody who hasn't been through pain never accomplishes anything amazing. So thank you. This pain that I'm, that I'm going through right now, amazing. Let's go. This is the best. If you could just change that mindset tweak, next time you find yourself complaining, angry, upset, frustrated, tell yourself, just try it. This is the best. This is the best. This is my chance to show myself in the world what I'm made of. This is my chance to grow. This is the best and watch how quickly it puts you into a resourceful state. Instead of being hopeless and complaining and upset and frustrated, now you feel like things are possible. Now you feel hopeful. Now you're resourceful. And now you're way more likely to solve the problem instead of sitting there complaining about it. It's the best. Also, if you wanna have more self-confidence and self-belief, the science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action for you to shift that habit forward. So I've designed a special free program to help you get more self-belief for every day for 254 days, I will send you an email to an unlisted video that if you watch it, will shift your confidence forward. The links to join for free are in the description below. Find whatever the smallest first step is and then the smallest next step is and continue to build those steps. And when you look back, you'll have realized that you made some pretty significant progress. Successful people take responsibility for where they are in life. One, to get a little bit more credibility, if you're just getting started, people may not know you, there's still a little bit of a cachet around having a book with a major publisher. Rule number three, have a consistent routine. Nobody wakes up with explosive energy ready to go and start the day. Not Tony, not me, not you, nobody, not consistently. The difference is that successful people have a morning routine that primes them for success consistently every day, so they demand the best of themselves. If you wanna change your life, change your outcomes, it starts with you changing your consistent morning routine. 
So let me share with you a recent change to my morning routine. I just came back from Puerto Rico. I was meeting with Brendan Bouchard. He had this mastermind that I was invited to with him and Tom Bilyeu and Dean Graziosi and a bunch of super high achievers and lots of fun. And at the end, he gave us this, which is his high performance planner. And what you do here every day is you fill it out and you put, let me go to today's date. There's, there's monthly, weekly, daily goals, right? And, and you fill this out. Now, I haven't, I haven't filled it. I don't use it as a calendar where you fill out what's happening every day. I still use Google Calendar for that. But it primes you with questions. So it says, example, person I need to lead or connect with today and how to do it well. Uh, my top three goals, priorities, right? Uh, my, my first one was make amazing YouTube videos. Ah, hope I'm doing it. Uh, today's message to myself. You got to fill all this stuff in. One of my favorites, where is it? If I was a high performance coach looking at my life from a high level, I would tell myself to remember that. And then you fill it up, right? And so this is what Brendan does every day. I'm applying it as a test. He said, do it for the next 30 days. Most people quit after seven, do it for at least 30. This book I think takes you to 60 and I'm doing it and I'm testing it. And, that, and that's part of the process, right? The most important part right now of my morning routine is doing the thing that makes me want to soar. And so think about what makes you come alive and then put that into your morning routine. But I love trying on different hats and ex exploring and Brendan does this, let me give it a shot. Uh, John Astrap does that, let me give this a shot. And then you, you play with it and you see how does it make you feel? Are you ending up achieving your goals? Are you ending up being more productive? Are you ending up being happier, more energized, more fulfilled at the end of every day? And if yes, keep doing it. And if not, don't. You have to figure out what the best morning routine looks like for you. And that can come from trying on different people's hats and their schedules, but you have to have something. Everybody has something. Nobody just wakes up and then hopes that amazing things happen. Not people who are successful. A lot of people wake up like that though. A lot of people do wake up. Most people wake up and hope something happens to them. Hopes they win the lottery. Hopes they get the promotion. Hopes some big customer calls them, right? We're just living in a land of, I hope something big happens to me, but I don't believe it's going to, as opposed to demanding excellence from yourself every day. And it begins with your morning routine. So how can you do it? I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is figure out what makes you sore. So I said, this is the most important part of my morning routine. What makes you come alive and soar? What makes you feel like the work that you do matters and you have to show up today? So for me, I have to think of a message every day. I think about you guys every day. I, I, I wake up, I'm here in my Toronto condo. It's hard to imagine that 300 million people have seen my videos. It, that, that number doesn't make any sense. Right, And so it's easy just to wake up and just continue to live my life, me, my dogs, my wife, and my condo, and, and just another okay day, right? I have to remind myself that the work that I do matters. I think of a message and then I share it. And I take out my phone and I, and I post something to Instagram typically, right? And that sets me up. That reminds me that what I do matters is meaningful. I need to demand excellence from myself. What is it for you? Maybe it's creating a piece of content. Maybe it's making a video. Maybe it's watching a video. Maybe, th maybe this is part of your morning routine, thank you. And it helps you soar, right? Maybe it's doing a good deed. Maybe it's meditation or prayer or walking the dog or playing in the, in the sun, like whatever it is. What makes you come alive? You have felt it before. You have felt it before. You've had moments in your life where you were bold, confident, unstoppable, powerful, where you felt like you could take on the world, right? Where you felt like your crazy ideas were possible. You felt that before. I know you have. The problem is, the problem is it's not consistent. You're not consistently feeling that way. And so you need to reverse engineer yourself before you worry about taking on other people's routines and ideas, which are definitely helpful, reverse engineer yourself to figure out when in your life did you feel the most bold, confident, powerful, alive, and what led to that happening? What led to that happening? And then put that into your morning routine. Demand it from yourself every day, right? So it could be reading, it could be watching video, all the things I talked about, it doesn't matter. You felt it before, reverse engineer what that thing was, and then put it into your morning routine. Because if you woke up and you did the thing that made you sore, that made you feel bold, unstoppable, powerful, confident every single day, holy cow, get ready for a massive change in what your life looks like over the next year. Step number two is ask the high performance coach question. So again, I'm going through all of this stuff with Brendan. I'm going through all this. And, and my favorite question was the one I read. If I was a high performance coach, this is what you should ask every day. I like this. If I was a high performance coach looking at my life from a high level, I would tell myself to remember that. 
because it's so easy. Why I love this is it's so easy to look at other people's lives and say what needs to be fixed, right? <laughs> you can look at your spouse, your friends, your team, your parents, your siblings, you know, your high school mates, whatever. You can look at other people and say, that needs to be fixed. You gotta go off and do this, right? You, you become the high performance coach for other people. And what I love about this is if you're looking at your own life today as a high performance coach, what would you tell yourself? And then they have one at the end of the day, uh, if I was my own high performance coach, I would tell myself this statement about today. So of all the things on here, this is, it's a great format. I like that the best. And so I would challenge you for the next 30 days to ask yourself that simple question. If you were a high performance coach looking at your life from a high level, you would tell yourself to remember that what? And then step number three would be which three people can you model their routine? So Brendan, you know, he's got his, and I'm, I'm modeling this for at least 30 days. I've added, you know, John Asaraf, a friend of the channel, been on a couple times, uh, talks about writing down your goals every day and then, and then touching them, right? So I'll write down some goals and then, I, and then I write them every day now and I'm touching them, right? That's what he does. Great, again, you gotta see what's gonna work for you. Maybe I do that for 30 days and stop. Maybe, maybe it's what I do for the rest of my life. I don't know, you won't know until you do it consistently enough. So pick three people who you like. Pick three people who you respect, who you look up to, who say, this is the kind of person that I wanna learn from. And then go investigate how they start their day. And then, and then try on some of it, right? You might love The Rock and he works out for four hours a day. You may not be able to do that, but you could work out for an hour a day, right? Because maybe you're doing nothing every day. <laughs> so it's a good starting point. Like just get to the gym and start working out every day, right? So pick three people who you love, look up to, respect, admire, and then go research what are their morning routines and how can you apply one thing from each of them to see if it works for you? Runa, before I put in the work. I would say work hard and smart. I think there's a lot of people who have, there's a lot of people who have dreams and work hard, but they never they never make progress on it because they're doing the wrong things. This is something that we, we looked at a lot for our Instagram content. There's a lot of people who are promoting work smart, work smart, work smart. And it's totally true. You need to work smart but you also have to work hard. There's nobody who's one who has only worked smart, but not hard. Um, I see hard work as your ticket in. And ideally you're doing work that doesn't feel like work. Like I'm here making these videos, you know, <laughs> with a headache and everything. And it doesn't feel like work. This, this brings me joy. I'm actually feeling a little bit better because I feel like I'm doing something that matters and it brings me joy. Where for somebody else, this could be torture to them. And so hopefully your version of working hard isn't, isn't torture, isn't you absolutely hate the thing, you're gonna do whatever it takes, because you won't do whatever it takes. You're gonna, you're gonna quit and give up. You can only do something you hate for so long before you quit and move on. But I think working hard is definitely your ticket in. All of your heroes, all the people you look up to, respect, love, admire, want to be like, it's your ticket in. It, it's, it's how they, how they started was massively working hard towards accomplishing their goals. But working hard alone isn't enough. There's lots of people who work hard and never, never make it. This is the work smart argument. There's lots of people. There's people who, who are, you know, people who are cleaning this condo. You know, the people who are hired by, by my condo to, to, you know, clean the pool and mow the lawn and all this stuff. A lot of people are working crazy hard. You probably know lots of people who, who, you know, broke their backs working really hard, but then they never had massive success. They just worked really hard at their job because they weren't working smart enough. They might have had a dream, but they weren't working smart towards that dream. So hard work is your ticket in it, but it's just like, you just got your chance to go to the race, right? It's your, it's your ticket to the race. It means you're allowed to run. But there's lots of people now who are running. There's lots of people who work hard. Uh, it's not the majority. So you're already, if you're working hard, you're probably already in the top 10%. But just being a hard worker doesn't mean you're gonna get your goals. So that's when you also then have to work smart. You gotta ask, what is the best use of your time? What tools can I use? What resources can I use? Who can I help? How can I automate, delegate, uh, eliminate so that I'm working on things that matter? A uh, quick example, I have Jeremy uh, on my team who 
who I invested in as an entrepreneur to help build a YouTube consulting business. And he's built a, in, in his first year, built a six figure YouTube consulting business, helping people grow their YouTube channels. And when I first met Jeremy, he came to my Thought Leadership Academy in Toronto, my three day event, and he was, he was a stock boy at a, at a grocery store. Like he hated his job, just working at a grocery store, work, earning minimum wage, brain dead kind of work. And I remember, I mean, I was a landscaper way back in the day. So I remember doing brain dead, just physical work and, and feeling like I need to be challenged mentally. And afterwards, after the event was over, he said, I love the energy. How do I, I mean, I want to keep doing it. This three days was awesome with you. How do I, how do I have more ongoing? I'll walk your dog, I'll wash your car. Like, what can I do? And I told him, I don't need somebody to wash my car or walk my dog. Right? That would be the equivalent of just working hard. You gotta find something that's valuable. If you wanna leave that job, washing my car and walking Timo and Tristana, wherever they are, um, is not gonna be your solution. It's not gonna be the path. And then a couple months later, I was thinking about him while I was on my tour and I thought, hey, why don't, we, why don't I invest in Jeremy and teach him how to do YouTube so that he can help other thought leaders because he loved thought leaders. We loved, he loved reading books on people and watching videos. And he got into books by reading, uh, by watching a video of Robert Herjavec from my channel. What changed his life was he decided he was frustrated with his life. He went to YouTube, saw a video I did on Robert Herjavec, bought his book, I think it was Driven, and then started getting into personal development, videos and books. And because he liked working on, on himself and learning from thought leaders, I thought, hey, just learn YouTube, I'll teach you. And then you can go help these people have an even bigger impact and reach more people like you. And um, it worked out and he's got, you know, six figure business in his first year and, and constantly growing, it's amazing. So it's working hard plus working smart that combination. If you're not working hard in your business right now, it's because you're either afraid of the work or you don't like the work. And in either case, you have to, you have to figure that out. If you're afraid to, of the work, like you're afraid of making a video because people might laugh at you, great. You, the answer is, is through, you have to do it. You do scary things. Um, if you're not working hard because you don't like the work, because you look at it, oh, I really don't want to go and talk to that person or go do, then, then you need to, you need to move on and do something else because you're never going to win doing work you hate because there's other people who love doing that work and they're going to crush you because they love it and you don't. And they need to think, how, are, how can you work smarter? Is this the best use of your time? Has somebody else figured this out? How can you model success so you can get to your goal faster? That combination, inside that combination. If you don't love the work, you have to find something else that you love. And if you love the work, but you're not getting result, <clears throat> result, results, you love the work, but you're not getting results. Uh, then you don't work smart enough. You're not working smart enough. You're not doing the right tasks. You're not doing them well enough. And that's what you need to fix. Work hard plus work smart. Either one in isolation is not enough. Rule number five, the last one before our very special bonus clip, be bold. What would the boldest version of you do? Think about your mission. Think about your goals. Think about what you are trying to accomplish. You've got what you're doing now, but think about what the boldest version of you, if you summoned the boldest version of you into existence right now, what would he or she tell you to do? So when I did my tour earlier this year, it was 90 days, 23 cities, and at first I wanted to do it for free. I love doing free coffee shop meetups every time I travel to a new city, and I told my agent Steve in New York, Hey man, this is my idea. He said, you need to charge for the event. You gotta play bigger. You gotta, you gotta do a bolder version of you. And it, it's freaked me out, it scared me because I don't wanna disappoint people. And the idea of charging for something and then me disappointing people and then hitting that fear every four days because <laughs> I got up in a new city every three to four days for 90 days was me being able to conquer my fears. And so Steve pushed me and I have Steve's voice in my head. It's like, you need to play bigger. You gotta do something bolder. What's the next step? And so I'm looking at my next tour coming up in 2020 around my book, Built to Serve, and I'm trying to think, how do I make it even bigger? How do I make it even bolder? Because what I've done has been great. And it's not trying to take away from what I've done. It's amazing, I'm proud of myself, I'm grateful, awesome. And I know I'm capable of more. 
and I know I need to do something at the next level because if I want to go off and accomplish my mission, I need to. Because at the rate I'm going right now, I'm not gonna hit a billion people. I'm not gonna solve the world's biggest problem. I'm not gonna have the impact and reach that I know I can have. Unless I demand more boldness, bigger scale from myself on a daily basis. And so for me, having Steve's voice in my head, having Elon Musk's voice in my head, having Steve Jobs and Ipa Janini and my parents and Kanye West and Howard Schultz constantly in my head, the content that I make is for myself. It's selfish for myself. And then I share it with you guys and thankfully you like it so I can build a business around it and hire your team and, and cre keep creating more. What makes you bold? What makes you come alive? And how do you summon that creature on a daily basis? When you, if you wake up and you daily, every day, consistently, are bringing the boldest version of you, even for one year, if you woke up every day for one year and summoned the boldest version of you, your life is gonna look dramatically different one year from today. So how do you start playing a bigger game and being more bold? I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think is gonna help. Step number one, what would the boldest version of you do? Just asking that question, just taking five minutes, sit down, grab your coffee, eat your breakfast, have no distractions, and just think about it for five minutes. What would the boldest version of you to what would the boldest version of you today do? What would you do? Look at your day ahead. Look at look at your plans. Look at what you've got up in your schedule today. If you were bold, if you summoned the boldest version of you today, what would you do differently? And then summon the strength and summon the courage and go do that thing. Step number two is think big and act small. Think big, act small. You have to think big because you're an entrepreneur. You've got big dreams, big ambitions. We wanna change the world. You got an important mission, a vision that's driving you every day, right? I feel it, I'm connected to it too. I got a big vision that I never wanna end. I wanna chase it down for the rest of my life. But sometimes the big vision, yes, it is empowering and yes, it is inspiring, but sometimes it seems too big. Sometimes it seems impossible. Sometimes it seems like we're never gonna do it without getting venture capital and partnerships and, and a huge team and all of these things and then you stack it on top of each other and then you don't do anything because it's too big an idea that you can't do it alone. That's where you need to act small. Think big, big vision, but act small. Like what's the smallest, simplest, easiest thing that you can just do right now? It might be just picking up your phone and making a video. You wanna have a YouTube channel? You wanna build momentum? Create, create a video today, right now. And you won't know what you're talking about and you won't have perfect audio and you won't have the great lighting and it will be garbage editing, great. Because the biggest thing that's missing, the biggest thing that's missing from you, from your mission actually happening is momentum. You're a genius, you've got great ideas. That thing that's in here needs to be birthed, but there's no momentum. You're not doing enough on a daily basis to actually create that thing and get it out to the world. So think big, act small. And step number three is to understand that your bucket list is your excuse list. People walk around with a bucket list of things that they wanna do before they die. The problem is you've given yourself until you die as your timeline. It's an excuse list. Look at what's on that bucket list. Everything on there is excuses. You've come up with stories as to why you can't do it. I just came back from uh, speaking at Dean Graziosi's and Brendan Burchard's event in Phoenix and there was a woman who was in front of me said hey I've got dancing on my bucket list she found out that I had owned Toronto Dance Salsa and now dancing's on my bucket list like don't say that your bucket list is your excuse list and then she was taken aback but then she looked down and, and she you know pulled up her dress a little bit and, and you could see her she had a broken foot or something wrong with one of her legs I said great She's showing it to me as if, oh, and now I'm supposed to understand your situation. That's why you can't go dancing. She showed it to me and then I said, okay, can you march? Can you do this? Can you just, can you do this? Can you march? She says, yeah, I can march, I can walk. Great, give me your hands. And I picked her up and we started doing merengue. And I was doing all these turn patterns and making her move and turning around and she had her first merengue dance. And then she realized all I need is somebody to hold on to. I can dance, I just need somebody to hold on to. Don't wait until five years later, 10 years later, until you die for that bucket list to happen. Today, your bucket list is your excuse list. Stop telling yourself all the reasons why you can't do something, and if it was important enough to you, you'll chase it down. I'm passionate about this. I'm gonna tell you one more story. There was one guy, same event, who says, getting to the top of whatever mountain is his on his bucket list. But he doesn't have the money to do it, and, and he doesn't have the time to do it, and all this stuff and he's doing all these little things instead of chasing down his one big goal. 
if he hit the top of the mountain, everything else in his life would change, would be different. He'll come back a different person, a different human. All the things that he thinks are so important to him right now will not be important when he comes back. These little projects that are distracting him from doing the big thing that he wants to do will disappear. He'll come back a new human with a whole different path ahead of him. You have to figure out a way to get to the top of that mountain. You have to figure out, look at your bucket list and recognize that's just a list of excuses you've got there. Pick the thing that you actually care about and go chase it down immediately. Your fear of other people's judgment is the single biggest factor holding back the success of your life. You want to serve others. Humans are built to serve others. You need it. It's your purpose. But serving requires someone else. And as long as you're worried about that person's judgment and opinion of you, you'll stay still and never act. So you've got one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas pushing hard, spinning your wheels, and never going anywhere, knowing that you're capable of a lot more, but afraid to take action. I don't tell a lot of stories about my parents. They had a huge impact on my life. They're here on the wall behind me. I'm eight or nine years old, and, and that's them above me. They're really private people, so I, I keep the stories that I share about them to a minimum. But one of my favorites are when I was in school, I was in art class, and the teacher told me to do a project, and he said, paint a window. And so I painted a window and then I added a sailboat and I added sunshine and I, paint, I had, had some curtains and I added a lot more to the painting. And I failed the assignment because the teacher said, well, I asked you to paint a window and you did all this other stuff. And so my parents went into school later on and said, hey, uh, what was the assignment that you asked Evan to do? And said, well, paint the window. I was like, well, he clearly painted the window. I mean, he did what you told him to do. <laughs> and and they, they stood up and became a shield for me. And I was blessed to have amazing parents. You might have amazing parents, you might not. It doesn't matter either way. But wherever you learn and however you learn, you have to learn it. That you need to go off and express yourself. You need to go off and create the thing that you want to create, even if the rules tell you that you can't do it. Even if your teachers tell you that that's crazy. Even if your parents tell you you'll never make it and they want you to do something safe and practical. You have to do it because otherwise you're teaching yourself to play small and that permeates for life. You have ideas, you're a genius, you've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. You should be off creating amazing things, but you're afraid because of other people's judgment. And as long as that is the thing that is in the back of your head, that you're not afraid of failing, you're afraid of failing in front of somebody else. You'll sing in the shower, but you won't sing on the street because you're afraid of what other people are gonna think about you. And as long as that is the reason why you're not taking action, then you lose for life. And the goal of this video is to stamp that out. So I've got a three-step process that I think will help. Let's dive in. Step number one is the boom, boom test. And that's your heart. When your heart's going boom, 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 right? You're nervous, you're afraid, you're scared. When your heart's beating boom, 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 that is go time. That means you have to take action. That means you gotta step into it. Every time your heart is beating, especially, especially, especially around other people's judgment of you, even if you have no interest in the thing at all, just the fact that you're willing to go off and do it and risk potential embarrassment means you have to do it because you don't wanna teach yourself that you catch yourself being nervous and playing small because you're teaching yourself that you suck and that's not acceptable. When you feel your heart going like this or your palms sweating or whatever your sign is that you're nervous or afraid, you have to go off and do it. Now, be safe, don't do something stupid, obviously, right? Don't go trying to juggle knives that are on fire, okay? There are some limits, but most of the things that you're afraid of are not that. Most of the things that you wanna go off and execute are not, I wanna juggle flaming knives. The thing that you're afraid of are other people's opinions of if you fail or not. You have to stomp it out because this will haunt you for life and prevent you from accomplishing the goals that you have for yourself. So take the boom, boom test. Boom, boom. Your heart's going boom, boom. That's not play small time, that is go time. Step number two is the Quincy Jones rule. Quincy Jones, legendary music producer, had this one line and it's in his top tens and I love it, where he says, Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. And I just, I just remember that. Anytime I'm worried about what somebody might think of me, I think back to Quincy Jones. I think back to all the people that I profiled. If you wanna be a leader, if you wanna be an innovator, if you wanna be an entrepreneur, you're doing things that are different, right? You don't wanna wake up and live the same life as everybody else. 
But in order to do that, you have to be willing to live a different life and to be able to face criticism for living that different life. Even if most of the judgment that's coming at you is really those people's insecurities, right? Most people who are throwing shade at you, they don't like their own life. Most people don't like their life and they'd rather attack other people who have a better life or at least trying to chase down a better life than try to do something on their own. So the Quincy Jones rule and all the people that I profile, look at them, study them, see what they went through, see what they struggled with, see how many people threw shade at them and told them they were not gonna make it. And the more you surround yourself with that and know that that's normal, like that's actually the process that you go through to be a leader, to be an innovator, to be an entrepreneur, to be a success, to be a creative, it gives you more confidence. So remind yourself of the Quincy Jones rule that not one ounce, not one drop of your self-worth comes from somebody else's opinion of you. And step number three is be the tree. I see entrepreneurs and leaders as trees. What does a tree do? A tree breathes in carbon dioxide, which, which too much of for a human is poison. Like you get carbon dioxide poison, it's too much. But a tree breathes it in. And what does a tree do with that carbon dioxide? They breathe it in, they eat it, grow from it, and then spits out oxygen positivity for the world. I think that's your role. I think that's your job as an entrepreneur. Your job actually is to eat everybody's judgment. Eat all the people, all the naysayers that say, you can't do this, you're never gonna make it happen. To eat it, to grow from it, and then to spit out positivity for the world. That you become the example of what's possible. That you become the, the person that people look to and say, look what this person overcame. And they did it, and then you're the shining star that other people look to, and you give permission for other people to chase their dreams too. Even the fact that you're willing to try, even if you never make it, the fact that you're willing to try will be an inspiration to other people to go off and bet on themselves. So you're the tree. I think that's part of your role. And flipping the mindset of, oh, I'm taking on this negative judgment and people hate me and they think I suck, to say, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Because I'm gonna go off and get my dreams and I'm gonna inspire millions of people to go off and chase theirs down as well. Be the tree. Because you made it this far in a video, I wanna celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different, you are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to know the biggest hack to learn anything you want, check out the video next to me. I think you're gonna enjoy, continue to believe. I will see you there. Everybody talks about mentorship and how important it is and I don't have anybody in my life to help me. <laughs> Books could be that for you. Books can be an accumulation of, of sometimes decades of knowledge 